Hi all, today we are going to discuss about constructional details of three phase induction motor. So, we have already discussed the DC machine. In the case of DC machine, there will be fluxes produced by the two fields. One is the, the poles that are on the stator and on the rotor there is an armature. This armature is given the supply from your external supply. So, we are giving the DC supply here also as well as the here also we are giving the supply through the electromagnets. So, here two supplies are there. So, we can call it as doubly excited device. That means two excitations are there due to interaction of the fluxes produced by the stator and the flux produced by the armature because the current is passing through them. These two fluxes will interact with each other that produces the required torque in the rotor. So, rotor will start rotating. But if you come to an induction motor, the three phase induction motor, the three phase induction motor, the stator will have the winding. So, distributed winding will be there on the stator, which is wound for three phase. So, three phase supply will be given. Three phase supply will be given to the stator and the rotor is not connected electrically. So, rotor only receive the power from the stator based on the principle of induction. So, based on the principle of induction or which we can also call it as electro magnetic induction, the EMF will be induced in the rotor. Now, the EMF that is induced in the rotor will produce a flux. That flux will interact with your stator flux, thereby producing the torque. So, as only single excitation is given here, so we can call it as a singly excited device and the rotor, the EMF is induced because of the electromagnetic induction principle because of which the torque is produced. So, that is why this is called as the induction motor. The reason why it is called as induction motor is this one only. So, the rotor bars will be short circuited on the rotor. So, circulating currents will pass in the rotor. That circulating currents will produce a flux. That flux will interact with the stator to produce the torque. So, this thing we are going to see in detail in the next class. So, today we are going to see what will be the part, what will be the constructional details of your induction motor. So, before proceeding to that, let us see what are the advantages and disadvantages. So, it is a simple and rugged construction is there and it is relatively cheaper, requires less maintenance and it is having self-starting property. Because of this, because the cost is less, so we can tell that the cost is less and the maintenance is less. So, because of these advantages, you see that most of the motors that you use in our day-to-day -day life are induction motors only. So, because of this, the induction motors are used in our day-to-day -day activities. You can see every day whichever motor you are seeing, including your ceiling fan, as are induction motors only. Only the difference is they may be single phase or three phase induction motors. So, but there is a disadvantage of the induction motor. The disadvantage is speed cannot be changed so much easily and the starting torque is less than the decision motors. So, wherever you want the high starting torque, we cannot go for the induction motors. And the second disadvantage is the speed cannot be controlled easily. Wherever you want nearly constant speed, you can go for the induction motors. If you want to change the speed, it is little bit difficult in the induction motor when compared to that of DC motors. So, that is the disadvantage of the induction motors. Now, coming to the constructional details. So, it will have a stator. Though stator will have, it consists of a frame. So, let me take some color which will be visible. So, I am selecting this one. This is also not visible. Right? So, I can take some light color. So, this is having a frame. So, there will be outer frame. So, outer frame is made up of a steel. So, outer frame is made up of steel. So, attached to this frame, there will be a hollow cylindrical core. So, this is made up of laminated silicon steel. You can see this is the core. So, I am changing the color again. So, this is the core material which is made up of laminated steel. So, it is made up of a laminated steel. So, the lamination is done in order to decrease the iron losses in the core because the AC supply is given to the stator because stator will be given with three phase supply. So, we have seen in the last class because of three phase supply rotating magnetic field is produced. As the flux is linking with this stator, this is also a type of conductor. As it is linking with the conductor, so EMF will be induced in this conductor. So, that because of the EMF, there will be a losses. So, these losses we call as iron losses, which includes the hysteresis loss and eddy current loss. So, if you want to decrease them, 
So in order to decrease the ED current losses, we have to laminate the core. In order to decrease the hysteresis losses, we go for silicon steel. So this is the reason it is made up of silicon steel and laminated. So and second one, the induction motor, the air gap between the stator and rotor should be as minimum as possible so that the magnetizing component of the flux, because we know that the flux is equal to MMF divided by reluctance. So this reluctance depends on the air gap. So this depends on the air gap. This MMF is number of turns into current divided by reluctance. So for a given current, as the reluctance is increased, so flux will decrease. Or to produce the same value of the flux, if the reluctance is increased, so automatically the current that is required will increase. So more magnetizing component of current will be required if air gap is increased. So that's why we have to maintain the reluctance minimum or the air gap as less as possible. That's why the air gap is maintained between 0.4 to 4 mm. Generally, if you take the stator construction, it will be like this. So in the periphery, so there will be slotting will be done like this. So the slots will be done like this. So in these slots, the conductor will be placed. The distributed winding will be placed. So three phase distributed winding will be placed. So in order to produce the rotating magnetic field, how the three phase winding is made and other things. If you want the complete details, you can refer to my induction motors playlist. You can go to the winding there. So there I have explained in complete detail as it is beyond the scope for the first year. So that's why I am not discussing that here. So this is about the stator. I am just repeating again. The stator contains of is outer steel frame and this steel frame is used for protecting your machine from the external sources and inside that there will be a laminated silicon steel core. So in order to decrease the iron losses, so on that core, the winding is made, distributed winding is made. So that produces the rotating magnetic field. So winding will be made like this. So this is the three phase distributed winding will be made here. So now coming to the rotor. So let us go to the rotor now. So the rotor, there are two types. One is called as the squirrel case rotor and second one can be the wound rotor. In the case of squirrel case rotor, the name itself is telling it will be resemble a case because if you take a squirrel on the squirrel also, you will see the lines will be there like this on the squirrel. So same thing, it resembles a case like and same thing like a squirrel. So there will be a case. So case means these will be the bars. These are made up of aluminum or copper bars are used. So these bars are short circuited on both sides. So these rings are called as end rings. End ring will be this side and this side. So these bars will short circuit the conductors on both sides. So the EMF will be induced in these conductors as they are short circuited, the circulating currents will pass in them and that will lead to the production of torque. So if you see this rotor, so rotor will be like this. This is called as the squirrel cage rotor. So this rotor in order to decrease the reluctance, so automatically it should be kept on an iron core. That's why it is made up of laminated silicon steel core. So the bars are lying here and generally these bars are not straight. It will be inclined at some angle. The reason why they are inclined at some angle is to make the flux distribution uniform or to decrease the harmonic torque or to decrease the vibration and noise in your motor. So if you want again the details about this, you can refer to the slot harmonics topic. So this I have discussed in my induction motors playlist. You can see if you want in complete details there. And the advantage of this squirrel case rotor is it is completely rugged and the conductors that are used are very thick and generally the rotor never damages. So it is having a rugged construction. So but the disadvantage of this is let us assume each conductor is having a resistance of R. So let us assume total there are 20 conductors in this cage. So the 20 conductors are connected in parallel. So total resistance equivalent resistance will be the resistance of each conductor divided by 20. So the resistance decreases drastically. So as the resistance is very less, generally the value of the torque in this machine is less. So whichever applications you don't want more starting torque, so the starting torque will be less. So whichever application you want the less starting torque, you can go for the squirrel case induction motors. That's why practically if you take your water pump, your ceiling fan, and most of the three phase induction motors you see, they are generally made up of the squirrel case rotor only because of its rugged construction. But and these applications are like that, there the torque requirement is less. But if you need an application where your starting torque required is very high, like if you want to pull a train, 
or if you want to lift something in those applications the high torque is required so in that case the resistance inside the rotor should be more so in order to insert the resistance in the rotor there should be a flexibility for me to insert they should not be short circuited like that so then we go for another type of rotor that rotor is called as a wound rotor in the case of wound rotor this is wound for three phase and second one the number of poles will be equal to number of poles on the stator so it is wounds for the number of poles that will be equal to the number of poles on the stator so this is the basic condition and these three terminals will be brought out like this these are connected in star connection so these three terminals so these are the slip rings so these are the slip rings so the slip rings you can see these are my slip rings so to these slip rings we will connect the brushes so the brushes will be connected to the slip rings to lead the current to the external circuit so these will be connected to the star connected resistance so these will be connected to a star connected resistance like this this resistance can be varied so the connection will be like this getting it so now because of this per each phase we can add some external resistance we can control the value of the resistance so by controlling the value of resistance we can control the torque as well as even the speed can be controlled easily by using them so which are applications you need high starting torque or variable torque and variable speed then we go for the slip ring induction motor but the problem with the slip ring induction motor is because there is a winding so there is a chance it will damage so maintenance cost will be more when compared to that of squirrel case induction motor so in this case of induction motor the starting torque is more because the resistance r2 is more when compared to that of squirrel case induction motor so these are the basic construction of your induction motor i hope the basic construction of the three phase induction motor is clear to you if you still have any queries you can leave your comments in the comment section below i will answer to your queries from there thank you thank you very much